In this video, we're going to be looking at topic five of GCSE Biology. Now, this is the first topic in paper two content, and here are some of the subtopics we're going to be looking at throughout this video in more depth. As always, all of these notes are going to be available on my Etsy page, which is linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy. First of all, what is homeostasis? Homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. This involves controlling things such as your blood glucose concentration, temperature, body salts, and a few other things. Something for you to be familiar with is something called a negative feedback loop. So as you can see here, if we start in the top left, a stimulus is detected as being too high. So this could be something like, you've just eaten a very sugary meal and your blood glucose concentration is very high. So then your body recognizes this, a response is coordinated, and the stimulus is decreased. We will get into more depth about how blood glucose concentration is decreased later on in the video. But now let's say that too much of that hormone has been released and the stimulus is decreased too much. So then we go to the top right. The stimulus is detected as being too low, a response is coordinated and another hormone is released to increase that blood glucose levels again. And then this is a loop because that exact thing could just repeat again and we could go back to the top left. Next we have the nervous system. There is a lot you need to know about the nervous system, but I've broken it down into these main components. Think of this as a flow chart. So similar to that example I used on the last slide, a stimulus is detected. Receptors on your body will detect this change. So for example, let's say you got stung by a bee. The pain receptors in your hands would notice this and create an electrical impulse and send it to the central nervous system via your sensory neurons. Now neurons are just a way to transport these electrical impulses around the body. As you can see in the little black writing I've got around these bubbles, synapses is another keyword and that is used to branch across different neurons. So it's not just one long neuron all the way from the receptors to the central nervous system. It will be made up of hundreds of thousands if not millions of them. And each time we cross between the neuron, a synapse will be there to help us do that. Once we're at the central nervous system, again, we'll get onto this in a bit more depth, but it will either go to the brain for a decision or a spinal cord if it's an unconscious action. There, the decision is made and it is sent via electrical impulses again through the motor neurons back to effectors. Effectors are just like muscles or glands and they will take action. And then finally the response is dealt with. So let's just go through that with an example such as you touch something really hot with your hand. So the stimulus is the hot thing. Your receptors, your pain receptors in your hand will realise, oh this is really hot, so this is not good. The sensory neurons will carry a message to the brain and say, we've just touched something really hot and the body doesn't like this. The motor neurons will take that message back from the brain after the brain has made a decision, and this will be passed on to the muscles in your hand or your arm, and all of a sudden your hand will be taken away really quickly. Now in our bodies, this happens in a matter of milliseconds. So it's a very sophisticated system, but this is the summary of it. Next, we have a reflex arc. Now, I'll just let you read those bullet points on the left-hand side here. So, this is purely for stimuli that could cause harm. So, using the examples I used before, the bee sting, or if you touch something hot, this would be a reflex action. It basically just skips out the brain and uses our own reflex to deal with the problem. Next, we have the endocrine system. Here is a brief summary of six of the main glands and organs that are used in the endocrine system. Endocrine system is purely for hormones. So the pituitary gland in the brain is what we call the master gland, and this controls other glands to release the hormones. Next, we have the thyroid gland in the top left. This produces thyroxine, which regulates your heart rate, metabolism, and temperature. We have the adrenal gland, which sits on top of your kidneys. It releases adrenaline to prepare for a fight or flight response. The pancreas produces insulin and regulates blood glucose, that sits just underneath. And then whether you're male or female, the testes release testosterone, control puberty and sperm production. And then the ovaries, if you're female, produces estrogen, which is involved in the menstrual cycle. 
For triple students, I believe there is a few more that you need to know about, but this mainly covers the bulk of it for everyone. Blood glucose maintenance. Now, blood glucose was something I mentioned earlier. There is a good play on words here. So insulin is produced when the sugar goes in. So effectively, when you've had that high sugar meal, insulin is released if the blood glucose gets too high to help bring it down to a safe concentration. Glucagon is released when the sugar or glucose is gone. So when you don't have enough of it anymore, glucagon is released to increase that blood glucose concentration. Now, sometimes people's bodies don't produce insulin or glucagon properly, or their body becomes immune to it, and this is known as diabetes. We have type 1 diabetes and we have type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is where the pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin, and treatment involves injecting insulin into the body. And type 2 is where, typically when a person has a sedentary lifestyle, so they become overweight or obese, and they have an unhealthy diet. So to reduce this, we can do the opposite. We can stay fit and have a healthy diet. Finally, we have the menstrual cycle. Now this one, it looks like there's a lot going on in this page. There are four hormones involved in the menstrual cycle, and there are also four stages. So as you can see here, this graph at the bottom is purely to do with the lining of the uterus and how it changes throughout a month cycle. So stage one for the first four days, the lining is broken down. And then the lining builds back up for the next 10 days. On day 14, roughly, stage three, the egg is released. And then stage four, the lining is maintained before going on to the next cycle. As you can see up in the top, I won't go through and read all of those. But FSH, estrogen, LH and progesterone are the four key hormones. FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone. And LH stands for luteinizing hormone. But it's important that you know the name of them, where they're produced, and the function for them. Again, this is for both combined and triple science, so don't feel like you should skip over this. And that sums up all of that topic. The next topic is inheritance, variation, and evolution. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe for more.